Hello everyone, a new Laura model just hit the top chart in Hugging Face recently. This is a Laura model for Quen Image Edit handles multiple angles. Additionally, the author also published a new Laura for image lighting restoration, which gives your generated image better lighting after repositioning it from different angles or after Quen Image editing. You even get enhanced object lighting as a bonus. I'm going to mainly focus on the multiple angle Laura, how it can be used, and as you can see, it's super simple by using really short, basic prompt or keyword, and you can generate multiple angles based on your reference image. And this is the beauty of good prompt adherence AI model. This remind us, in neural network, writing a paragraph or essay style is not necessary. Like here, you've got living room scenes. You start with the original image, and then you can switch to a close-up shot, pan left, right, tilt up or down. In Comfy UI, it's really easy to do with these multiple angle LoRa models. Now, here I have a basic Quen image edit workflow to demonstrate just using the LoRa models, and I've got this image. Normally, I'd use the load image path node, that's what I usually do. But for demo purposes, I'm using the regular load image node, so you can visually see what's being loaded from the reference image. The reference image I'm using is a Santorini view, and my prompt looks like this. Image 1, move the camera forward. It's a super short prompt. The AI easily understands what to generate. These are just little hints for controlling the camera with multiple angles. You can check out the Hugging Face page, I'll link it in the video description below, and you'll see it's really simple and straightforward. Here's the result. As you can see, all the building structures stay exactly the same. First, you'll want to implement this LoRa model. When you click into the file tab under versions, you'll notice the file name is in Chinese, like a .safe tensors file. If you're an international user, you might want to rename it to make it easier to use. For example, from the Hugging Face page, the model is called Quen Edit, multiple angles. So you could rename the file to match that when you save it in your Comfy UI folder. Inside your Comfy UI folder, you'll put it in the models folder and within that, in a subfolder. I've created a separate subfolder just for Quen Image Edit to keep things organized. Once you've saved the file, go ahead and rename it to match the Hugging Face page title. That'll make it way easier to recognize. Now moving on to the Light Restoration LoRa. The process is the same. Download the LoRa model and I renamed mine to Quen Image Edit Light Restoration .safe Tensors. Once you've downloaded and renamed it, just refresh Comfy UI by pressing R. All your model directories will refresh, and then you can connect the LoRa model in this group. After the diffusion model loads, you can plug in the LoRa model. In this pipeline, I've got both the multi-angle LoRa and the light restoration LoRa connected for lighting adjustments. It's really easy. Just use the text prompts and instructions provided. You don't have to modify anything. Just copy and paste them in, and you'll get lighting restoration. Basically, it helps measure the lighting figuring out where the light's coming from, and then restructures your whole generated image to reflect that lighting properly. So we're going to use these two LoRa models to create multiple scenes. For example, if you want to create a video using just the first and last frames, you can get a controllable video shot showing exactly how you want the camera to move. This is way more controllable than just typing text prompts like camera panning up or left right. For instance, I created a scene here, a young lady on a party dance floor. I combined two reference images and regenerated a new one like this. Now, this first generated image, I didn't use either LoRa model yet. It was just based on the text prompt. Things can be a little off with Quen Image Edit. Let's enable the LoRa models. First, we need to generate a more consistent style, matching both the character and the background. In this case, I'm going to use the Consistency Edit V2 LoRa to help regenerate the scene. You could also use the Next Scenes LoRa we talked about in a previous video, whichever you prefer. The goal is just to lock in a consistent style for your character and background. Let's wait for this first image to generate, and then we'll bring it into multiple angles and relighting. Here it is. Now you can see we've got much higher consistency in both the character and the background compared to our first attempt. I'm going to copy this image into the image reference one load image node and paste it there. 
From now on, we'll just use reference 1 for our scene. I'll bypass reference 2. Now we can work on multiple angles and later we'll handle image relighting too. For the first step with our new image, let's turn the camera to a top-down view and shift it slightly to the right. In this prompt instruction, I'm using two camera angle controls, just following the example text prompts the author provided. And as you can see, it works. We get a top-down view shifted a bit to the right. The character stays in the same position. Now, let's make it a little better by having the character look up so her eyes focus toward the camera, and... Well, the face looks kind of creepy, but we can regenerate it later using this reference. Also, the image came out kind of dark. On a dance floor like this, there should be stage spotlights hitting the character from behind. So now, I'll enable the light restoration LoRa model and use this image as the reference to demonstrate relighting. As you can see, from the DJ stage, there should be a spotlight coming from behind the character. I'll use a Compare Image node to show the before and after of the relit image. This time, I'm only using this Chinese text prompt, which basically means remove the existing lighting and recreate it based on this image, to fine-tune the lighting of reference 1. Okay. This image isn't the best example in terms of quality, but you can still get the idea of what relighting means, especially with the top-down camera view, where the lighting effect becomes way more obvious after applying the relighting LoRa. Now you can see light reflecting off the character's back from the DJ panel and spotlights, something totally missing in the original image after we just moved the camera angle. So after repositioning the camera, you can use light restoration to get much better lighting, no matter the angle. And that's how easy it is. You don't need full sentences or long paragraphs. Just simple text prompts can give you multiple camera angles and relighting. The character still looks a little creepy, but you get the point. The first generated image lacked proper lighting or accurate light direction. You can clearly see the spotlight coming from behind the character. Next, I'll resize this image to 720p-A resolution and expand it to a wider camera lens view. Then, I'll redo the multiple angles based on this version. For example, let's say the first shot of this video scene is a far shot of the character on the party dance floor at 720p resolution. From there, I'll generate multiple angles using the LoRa models and apply light restoration after each angle is generated. And that's basically how I'd use the Quinn Image Edit Multiple Angle LoRa model for multi-camera shots. These LoRa's are super lightweight and honestly a lifesaver. You don't have to waste time trying to regenerate the exact same scene just to shift the camera view while keeping the background consistent. Here, I've generated a wider camera angle shot using just the multiple angle LoRa. The prompt is super simple. Image 1, turn the camera to a wide angle lens. And there you go, a wide-angle shot of the scene. You get a broader view of the environment, including those spotlights coming from behind. Of course, after changing the camera angle, you'll definitely need to relight the image. So these two LoRa models really work best together. You change the angle first, then relight, and then you can move on to creating different frames for your video. That way, your camera movement becomes way more controllable. As I just mentioned, you can take these multiple angle images and turn them into a video, giving you way more control over camera actions and exactly how you want the camera motion to play out. Here, I've set the wider angle shot as the first frame, and I'm using the first last frames method in WAN 2.2 to play around with this. I regenerated the last image so the character smiles better, so she doesn't look like she's got that creepy face anymore. So here's the first method you can use. WAN 2.2 with first last frames to video. As you can clearly see, this node only accepts two images as input. So first, we'll try that out. I've also linked in a third image, but since I'm using the standard first last frames to video node, which only takes two images, the resulting video will only move in one direction and have less dynamic camera motion. Then I discovered this custom node called when first, middle, last frame which accepts three images. 
That lets you use the first last frame approach, but with frame interpolation that includes a middle image too. We're generating the video with three input images, which gives us much more dynamic scenes. You're not stuck moving the camera in just one direction. You get more creative freedom once you enable three image input. Here's how you connect it. You've got the high and low noise inputs, so you plug in the positive high noise, positive low noise, and one negative condition. Basically, this custom node helps split the positive conditioning into high and low noise automatically, which makes the camera movement more accurate. Lastly, we bypass the native Comfy UI first last frames node and connect the latent noise from here instead. Let's try generating one and see how it looks. Remember, we're using three images now, not just first and last, so let's see what the output looks like with these settings. You can clearly see multiple angles. It starts with the first frame, then pans and zooms into a closer shot of the character, and finally moves up into a top-down view. These settings use a medium frame ratio of 0.3, which creates really fast motion, and that ratio is fully adjustable. You can play around with the numbers to get the timing you want. Now I'm going to generate two more examples using ratios of 0.4 and 0.5, so you can see the difference. This ratio controls the medium frame's timing, basically how long the middle image stays active during the transition between the start and end. When I use 0.3, the motion happens really fast in the first second. You won't see much detail or character movement. It's great for quick zoom-ins when you only have one or two seconds for that shot and the rest of the video focuses on other actions by the character or objects. All right. Here's the 0.5 version. You can see it takes longer to transition from reference 1 to reference 2, giving you more movement. It allows the characters and other people in the scene to jump, move around, and animate more naturally. You get more time for the AI to generate those in-between motions. From this example, even when I sync both videos timing, the camera movement feels different. But I also noticed that with 0.5 and the standard 81 frame duration in WAN 2.2, there isn't enough time left for the transition from the middle frame to the last frame. That can cause a sudden cut to the final reference image. So again, it's all about tweaking the settings. There's no single best medium shot ratio. It depends on what you're going for. Sometimes you want that fast zoom with 0.3. Other times, you prefer the slow motion feel of 0.5. For my next example, I'm using 0.4, right in the middle, to see how that looks. Here's the result with 0.4. Just by adjusting the medium frame ratio, you get totally different generations. Let me rearrange these from 0.5, 0.4 to 0.3 based on their output size. From left to right, you can compare them side by side, and as you can see, 0.4 looks the smoothest compared to the other two. We're still using three images here. Let me put them on top so you can clearly see what we're working with. The first image is a far shot, then it pans to a medium shot, and finally the camera moves to a top-down view of the character. With different medium frame ratios, we got three distinct video results, each with different timing for the same three image sequence. Using frame interpolation like this gives you way more flexibility than the native Comfy UI node, which only supports first and last frames and offers far fewer controls. These videos show what's possible. The main point I wanted to highlight is that with the multiple angle LoRa, you can do so much. And don't forget relighting your generated image afterward. You can see the lighting effect, the spotlights, are properly restored instead of leaving the dance floor looking like a dark void. The second takeaway? You can easily create controllable camera videos from these three image scenes. This is super practical for video content. You get multiple camera shots, and then you can add other actions after the camera pans around the character. That's how you apply this technique in real projects. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.